Average Fishing. I hope we're all well. I hope we're all enjoying the summer, living the bloody dream. As you can see, it's a stunning, stunning day today here. It's about 30 degrees. It is roasting. It is absolutely glorious. However, the other day I came down and the conditions were not this glorious. When I left the house, it was absolutely perfect. I thought, yeah, we're gonna be in the money here. I'm gonna get off the beach and try and nail a few fish. However, I ended up meeting a really moody cat and horrendous conditions. It's hella windy. And look how skinny you are. Oh, don't look at me like that. One minute. No, no, you're not getting in. But what I can give you, bloody hell, this is insanely windy. Woo! Cap's blowing away. I'll give you some of my little jam donut thing. These are my favourites as well. Give me a bud. Right. Bloody hell, trying to be nice. Don't flipping claw me. I know he's done one. What an oven. It's been nice. This is why I don't like cats. Fishing an offshore wind, I might as well be sat at home picking me bum. The worst conditions possible for fishing without a shadow of a doubt. Now it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out why an offshore wind is not a good thing. It sends all the bait fish out and the predators follow. Simple as that. So this could be a bit of a fiasco. And if it turns out to be a fiasco, we've got the micro jigging set up. We'll find a harbor and we'll go and have some fun with some micro species. That's the plan of action. I said everything was against us and we've got a fish on. You are kidding me. I think it's a flatty. No, it's a little char. There was a few of them in there. It wasn't just the one. <laughs> Everything is against us. And we nail a fish. Oh, that's a bit of a gammy hook up, isn't it? He's off though. <laughs> sods law. Absolute sods law. We fished for about two hours there and managed to nail that one little char and get mugged off by a cat. So I thought, hmm. Let's not leave it there. Let's head down to a little port that I know and see if we can nail a few micro species, which is actually where I'm filming this from now. I've come down here specially to film this, folks. It's about 40 minute drive, so I hope you appreciate that. But nevertheless, I came down here with no expectation whatsoever to be truthful with you. And literally the first cast, I hadn't even set up, I hadn't even really got myself sorted. We ended up nailing this monster rockfish. Oh my days, that's huge. That is absolutely huge. Holy spilio. I did not expect that. Oh, and I've lost the headphone. Oh my God. That's huge, man. I need to start being more prepared. What a fish that is. Oh my days. I thought I was snagged on the bottom. What a beast of a fish. I did not expect this lad to come from under the boat that's behind me there. What a worldie. Let's get him back. Check out that! Mad! Ooh. There he goes. Boom! Straight down under there. And this is what we're using. It's a Rosamizer Craw. Quite a cool lure. I bought them for perch in the UK and in truth, I'd had barely any luck with it. It was a bit of a disaster. But it's worked here, hasn't it? And then weight wise, a three gram weedless jig head. Beautiful stuff. That fish was a bit of a beast, wasn't it? Like, honestly, I didn't expect it from a port where I am now. Like, absolute colossal rockfish. But we then kept plugging away, ended up catching one of the angriest little knobheads I've ever caught. Oh, fish on. Yes, oh, get her there. Ah, nice. Nice, nice, nice. It's a, it's a rock fish of some capacity. And these guys have the sharpest fins in the world. And he's just done the biggest poo in the world. Nice. Maybe because he's, ow! <laughs> they are just pure sharp. We're getting him back. Look at him. Beautiful. The pooing rock fish. Honestly, those gill plates are horrendous. Don't. 
don't. They have honestly gashed me quite a few times, I'll be truthful. Not that one specifically, but other of the species. But that doesn't really tell the story. We had a couple of really cool rockfish, as you've seen, but there was a fish that was tearing my hair out. I was casting it out and I could see them coming in and there was some small ones and then there was the odd big one and I mean like decent sized fish and I was like, what the hell are these? At first I thought they were mullet or something, but they weren't mullet. And I just was like, what, what is going on? So we switched over from the soft baits and put on a bit of a classic spoon. And finally, I managed to nail one of these elusive weird fish. Got him on. I think, I think. Oh my God, finally, finally. You're not kidding me, I think it's a mullet. <laughs> that would explain things somewhat. It is a mullet. I, th it, it, I think. Are you kidding me, is that a dace? It looks like a dace, doesn't it? It's got the same mouth. Mad. Let's get him back. Wasn't that weird? In my opinion, it's a Japanese dace that's in the sea. Now, my only sort of presumption for that is that the, if it is a dace, it's in the sea because there's no food in the rivers, so it's come down to the sea like a brown trout or a sea trout, right? But at the same time, I'm not sure if it is a dace. So you guys can do me the absolute honour of letting me know. Anyone who knows Japan around the back of their hand, fishes in Japan, or even a Japanese subscriber, just do me a favour and help me out, right? Honestly. However, that was one of the small fish. Now there was huge, there were bigger fish in there. So I kept plugging away and eventually I managed to nail one of the bigger ones. Fish on. <laughs> that was the weirdest bite in the world. And it's another dace. But it's pretty bloody big. Like, they're definitely not mullet. Oh my God. I catch dace in the lakes, I catch dace in the rivers, I catch dace in the sea. That's huge. That is absolutely huge. It, it can only be a dace. I'm gonna get him up to the camera for you. That's a beauty. I'll even get the net out. And my unhooking mat. Oi, oi. Come on, son. Sorry for the crotch shot, and he's in. That's a huge fish. And I think that sums up this fishing trip. He flapped out. Sod's law, the fish literally was on my unhooking mat, chilling, had no issues, had still had the spoon in its mouth, may I add. Next thing I know, I turn around, the hook's gone and it's flapped off and it's gone. It's back to sea. That dace, man, the attitude on that bad boy to do such a thing. So, I then spent another 30 minutes trying to catch another one just to really show you this fish so you can really help me identify it. And eventually, we did manage to catch one. And it was pretty much as I'd packed up. I'd given up, to be truthful with you. And it was pitch black, and finally, we caught one. And we've been slammed by what can only be described. I think it's the fish I've been after. I can't actually tell, because it's dark. Honestly, like this is, sums this fishing trip up. I've just ended that and I cast out, right? And I, I like, it was a bit of a stupid idea, really. I cast it out and just sort of like was packing my bag away. And we've been hit. It's a bloody Japanese dace that I just spent half an hour trying to catch after the whole crap show with it flopping out the net. The one positive we've got here is that I'm all ready to go, other than the camera and it's dark, not ideal. Oh God, but now the unhooking map's blowing away. What a fiasco. I don't think you can even see anything. I'm so sorry. You can't see absolute crap. You've just got my running commentary, but it's a big old flipping slab of a dace. Get in the net. We're not having, you're not getting off now. You are not coming off now, mate. I can't get you in. Oh, bloody hell. Side note, has anyone seen a dace fight like that before? I haven't. And there we have it guys, the sea dace. 
No words. What a weird, weird fishing trip. I hope you've enjoyed. Look at him. Look at that daisy mouth. Colours on it. Happy bloody days. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Let's get him back. What a fish. What a guy. What a guy. You know what, mate? You violated me all evening and I've come and got you. Bloody Nora. That was a splash and a half. Pretty cool fish, isn't it? It's actually a bit of a beast. Like, these Japanese dace are pretty meaty fish and they put a great scrap up. Like, honestly, pound for pound, I'm very, very impressed with them. And I've caught some pretty hard fighting fish. Genuinely, I'm, I was pretty taken by the old dace. If it is a dace, please confirm it for me, folks. Please do. So that's the video. I had a bit of a mare filming it, to be honest with you, which is why you're getting this little side note section that I'm doing for you currently. It is one of those, you can't always have it your own way when you're fishing, especially when you're filming and fishing as well, because sometimes you're fishing and the filming bit comes a little bit difficult or whatever it might be. Sometimes it all falls into place, other times it doesn't. So it is what it is, and that's what this video really was. I hope you've enjoyed it, folks. If you have, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. We've got plenty more coverage coming from Japan, and I mean plenty more coverage. We've also got quite an exciting episode from Korea. Bit rogue, I know but you'll find out a little bit more about that in a couple of weeks time when it's all edited. So yeah, flip in, hit that subscribe button, do us a favor and keep watching the channel. Lots of love, tight lines, keep fishing.